Hey everyone, my name is Krista Azor. Welcome to the CWC. Do you want to talk about it? Because we can talk about it. Well, we're going to talk about it whether you like it or not on this podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to CWC. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. I hope you guys are having an amazing week, an amazing month, and that you guys are surrounded by love, good vibe, just positive energy. And yes, guys, let's get into it. I am so excited to be back here with you guys. Um, You know, I feel like I have a lot to share with you guys. And I'm just excited for every episode. So um, today's topic is called Stranger Danger. So this has came to my mind because I recently experienced something that I am not ready to share with you guys just yet. Simply because I have a headache every time I start talking about it and I'm just not ready to go back to that place but I did experience a similar situation that I can actually use to break down why I picked this topic today so my thing is why do we insist on telling kids or just our loved ones that they should beware of strangers you know because we all grew up hearing the term stranger danger you know don't say hi to strangers don't talk to people that you don't know you know don't be too friendly we've all heard those terms and i get why because you know life is unpredictable and people aren't always kind and a lot of times people have ill intentions especially when it comes to children you know kidnapping trafficking etc so there's a lot of bad things that could happen when a child is too friendly or easily taken by others so i get it but what i'm getting at is why don't we ever prepare our loved ones for the possibility that a family member or someone that they are close to could also hurt them just as bad as a stranger or even worse because that's somebody that you love or close to so i feel like that's also important because the most pain that i have felt in my life have been inflicted upon me by people that were closest to me and people that i actually loved so i feel like if we create a space and when if we prepare our our children or family members to be aware of their loved ones as well as they do strangers i think that would make the pain a little bit less when things do happen not that i mean obviously we're not hoping like no one is expecting to be hurt by their loved ones but um it does happen so i feel like we should make it normal to tell children hey i know this i know you love your uncle or i know you love your cousin or whatever but i just think you can never be too careful like if you see any red flag if you see any anything that doesn't seem right be careful and talk to me about it you know what I mean I just feel like parents should make it a safe place for their children to talk to them about anything that anybody has done to them regardless if it's a stranger or a family member um but yeah so I was living with my cousin when I was 17 years old I was living with her because, you know, she and I were very close and she initiated that I come live with her because I was in a situation in New York with my dad and my stepmom and the the situation wasn't the best. It wasn't pleasant at all. So she she suggested that I moved in with her. So I moved in with my cousin and um, shortly after moving with her and her boyfriend, they got married. And, um, you know, things were good. 
her boyfriend was very nice. He felt like part of the family. And she and I were so close that I also knew that if anything were to happen, I could go to her. So I wasn't worried because I was in a safe place. At least that's what I thought. But um, one day after, it was like two months after they got married, my cousin had a friend come over. Her friend was in distress. She was going through something with her boyfriend. And my cousin was just trying to cheer her up and just help her to calm down. And also giving her insight, you know, they were doing things like pros and cons about the situations. They were outweighing things to see, you know, what's the best way to move forward. And like I said, I was 17. I was just glad to be part of the conversation because I think that's why me and my cousin were so close because she never treated me as a dumb child, like, you know, a child with no sense. She always, she was always open and honest with me. In fact, she taught me everything that I know at a young age. You know, when I was like 13, she taught me about relationship, about sex, even how to put a tampon on. You know, she taught me all of these things. So those, that's someone that I was really close to because when I came to the United States I came with my dad and lived with my dad and stepmom so my mom wasn't around in certain things I could only go to my mom for so much over the phone you know so it was good that my cousin was there for me and she was teaching me so much but back to the day um so what happened is while she was trying to cheer her friend up she decided to they were already drinking but then she was like take a shot with me she told me to take a shot with her and let me just say that it is not uncommon for a person to give you a drink underage in Caribbean family because simply because we don't look at it as a big deal um like obviously they're not gonna you know give you like I'm not saying Caribbean parents will literally get drunk with you while you're underage, no. But I'm saying it's not uncommon for them to give you, like, a beer or let you taste it a little bit. You know, it's not uncommon. In fact, um, growing up in Haiti, every holiday or big parties, they always make this drink called cremas, and we all always have some of it. Now, obviously, they always made it that, like, they always made it, it was never strong. It was never strong enough to get any of us drunk, and they would never give us that much of it anyways. But um, they would let us taste it. That's what I'm trying to say. But I think that's also a good thing. Well, at least from my perspective, because when I turned 21, I didn't even care for drinking. And I was never the kind of person who was like, oh, my gosh, I can't wait to be 21 so that I could drink alcohol. Because I think because I was introduced to it at such a young age that I never went crazy over it, which I think could be a good thing because I feel like a lot of times kids turn 21 and they get so excited to try alcohol and find out what the hype is about that they get drunk and sometimes they get into car crash, you know, because they never know how to control it. They've never had it before. It was literally the first time having some alcohol and I just think, you know, things just take a wild turn. But I think because growing up they never made it seem like such a huge deal. So I never cared to go crazy and just get drunk when I turned twenty one. In fact, like till this day I'm I'm not a big drinker. Like if I go out I'll have a cactus and that's about it. Because I was never excited to like, oh my gosh, I can't drink now, you know. So I think in a way that's a good thing that Caribbean parents don't make such a huge deal about it. And I feel like it's safer to try a lot of things with your parents as opposed to trying it with strangers or friends because it could turn into a bad habit and it could just be a bad batch or whatever, like with every experience. So that's my point of view, though. I'm not saying that you should look at it that way, but to me, that's how I see it. I think a lot could have been prevented if our parents would just introduce us to certain things and ask us, what do we think about it? Now, I'm not saying get some cocaine and make your kid try it and then ask them what they think about it. But I'm saying something as a beer, you know, like something as little as that. I don't see the big deal of a 17-year-old trying it. But, um... 
Um, so yeah, the shot that I took with my cousin, that turned into us finishing an entire bottle. And the next thing I know, everybody was drunk. When I finally came to, I was in the shower and my cousin's husband had come home and he was pouring water over me. I was literally in the tub, fully clothed, just the shower running on me because apparently I had passed out and was throwing up. Like, that's how drunk we all were. And um, um, my cousin's husband offered to take the friend home and he suggested that I come with with him for the ride because the fresh air could be good for for me since I was throwing up and sick. Um, So my cousin was like, yeah, I think so too. I guess my cousin, since she was older, she had more control of her drinking, you know, she, she was older than me. So she was like, yeah, I think she should too. So yeah, I went for the ride with my cousin's husband to drop the friend off. And um, on our way back, when we got to the house, he parked the car, shut it off, and then as I was trying to open the door to step out, he grabbed me, pulled me back in the car, put his hands up my skirt, and I moved his hand. Even though I was drunk, I know that was wrong. I moved his hand. But he was like, just relax. He put his hand back and kept it there while he was touching himself. He touched himself until he came with his hand on my Penty just touching me. And obviously, when you drunk, you can tell something is happening to you, but sometimes you can't really do anything because it's kind of like you trying to move and your body just falls right back. It's kind of like trying to get up and you fall right back into the bed because you are that much out of your body because you're literally have no sense and no control i think that plays a part of why i don't like drinking this day because even when i go out with my friends i always i'm always the one to say i'm not drinking i always choose to be the designated driver simply because i just don't like the feeling of not being in control of my life my decisions now if a friend is having a party and I feel safe enough in that environment. I'll take a few shots with my friends. I'll be tipsy or even go as far as being drunk. But it's rare. It's not something that happens often. I don't get drunk often. And I actually, I have decided to not drink at all Um, ever since my birthday. My birthday was in September. And that's the last time I had some wine. And even prior to that, I wasn't doing any drinking. But I decided, you know what, I just don't want to drink at all. I'm not saying that's a forever decision. I'm young. (laughs) But for now, it's a decision that I want to keep for at least a year or two. You know, just because I have some goals and plans that um, I feel like they're not in alignment of me not knowing what's going on with myself or me being under the influence of anything. So... Back to the story, Um, when I came to the next day, that's when everything was becoming clear to me. Everything was coming into pieces, like piece by piece, I was remembering everything. Um, If you are old enough to drink and you have been drunk, I'm sure you know that, um, I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. It's when you, you know, something happened, but you are so drunk, that you don't remember when when you start getting back to yourself you start remembering things that's what was happening and as i was remembering things i remember texting my cousin's husband confronting him because he was at work and i didn't want to wait to figure out what happened i didn't want to wait to find out i needed to know right now if i was tripping or if this really happened so i texted him and said hey I didn't appreciate what you did last night. I feel uncomfortable. I feel validated, etc. And he texts back, admitted that I'm so sorry. I don't know what came over me. 
Um, I didn't mean to disrespect you like that. Anyway, so he apologized. And um, I did that because I wanted to have some kind of proof. Because I know that I wanted to tell my cousin. But um, I also felt bad that she had just gotten married. And I know the pressure of our family that cousin is from my dad's side of the family and i know the pressure of being married and i know how scandalous that would be to the family and i know she would be embarrassed she would probably i don't know i just i was just thinking of her and how embarrassing that would be for her and and of course how hurtful it'll be also because i know she would be hurt by it so i decided that um I wasn't going to tell her yet, but I knew that I had to tell her. I just didn't know how to. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but I just didn't. It's kind of like such a, it's it's like I was willing to carry the pain, the burden, and just let her be. And um, so I just stayed. I stayed with her. Also, I didn't have anywhere to go. That's another reason why I stayed in that situation. Now, I could have leave. I could have I could have instantly left the house and still not tell tell her, but I also had nowhere else to go. I didn't want to go back to my step um to my dad's house and live with my stepmom because that's not a pleasant situation. So, I just decided that I was going to keep working I was 17 I was working at Walgreens that was my first job it was my senior year so I decided that I was going to keep working save money to move out before the school year ended or just until I go to, away for college but that was gonna take a while so I thought moving out would be the best thing to do so yeah I, you know I kept um I became very elusive in the house when it comes to him I was I didn't hang out with with him as much like you know if he was present I would be in my room but if he was at work I would be hanging out with my cousin and I know that my cousin noticed a little change but she assumed that you know she's 17 she's just going through her phase in life so she never thought it was like something maybe happened to me but anyways fast forward I saved enough money I moved out with a friend my friend rented his um her she rented her aunt's basement and I I moved in with her we split the rent and my friend suggested that I tell my cousin she was like I still think you should tell your cousin because she needs to know who she married and what's going on and after giving a lot of thought I decided yeah I should share it because um my little cousins um, which is my aunt, my aunt kids, they usually go to my cousin's house and I would hate for that guy to do the same thing to them. So I decided to tell my cousin, I told her the truth and what I feared the most happened. My cousin did not believe me. Even though I showed her the screenshot of the conversation that he and I had of him admitting it and apologizing, she did not believe me. And she said to me, and I quote, I remember this clearly, and I have goosebumps just repeating that. She said to me, well, if it did happen, you liked it because I don't understand why you would stick around until you could move out after something like that happened to you. Because if something like that happened to me, I would have went back to my stepmother house no matter how bad things were. So obviously, it's either you're lying or if it did happen, you liked it, you enjoyed it. <laughs> and let me just tell you guys how I don't think I have the words to make you guys understand or feel what I felt in that moment when she said those things to me. It was kind of like my world came crashing down. Because the same, the first woman who taught me that to not trust men, to never fully trust men, was the same woman who was standing in front of me telling me that I was not assaulted by her husband and that if I was, I liked it. And I 
I don't think anybody who's been through that situation would ever want to hear those words ever. I don't think anyone, and I wouldn't wish anyone who has who who've had experienced such a traumatic experience to ever hear those words from anybody that is close to them or anybody that they love and look up to because that is something that stays with you now you might be able to forgive and move on but those words will ever will forever stay with you and that's what happened with me and from that point on my cousin and I we no longer had a relationship it was done for at that point I um I mean now we are on hello terms like you know we say hi and bye and if I see her we we talk and that only happens because shortly after that whole thing her mom passed and I spoke with my brother and my brother told me that well I think you should call her and wish her, um and tell her and give your condolences because you know no matter what she's still family granted how she handled the situation wasn't right but um when in death you have to do the right thing and I thought about it and I was like you know what I will go ahead and 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 give her my condolences because at some point this is somebody who at some point was everything to me you know and I still have love for her regardless I still have love for her yes just because just because I don't have a relationship with her anymore or I don't or that I she hurt me doesn't mean the love just go away that's not how love works when you love someone you love them and that's that you can love them from afar you can choose not to be in that person's life anymore but the love is always going to be there if you hear something bad happen to that person you are going to be hurt by that by hearing that news so um yeah that's how she and I ended up being on speaking terms again and it's obviously not like it was before but nonetheless we are back on speaking terms but i just want to tell anybody who is listening to this one thing i will say is that to never remain quiet in those situations no matter who might get hurt in this situation regardless if they believe you or not you are never to stay quiet if anyone has touch you molested you assaulted you or even abuse um abused you like all of that stuff you sh- you are never to stay quiet because i promise you that the pain that you will feel by remaining quiet will definitely outweighs the pain that you could potentially cause anyone else by telling your truth so don't ever remain quiet regardless the consequences that's a mistake that i made i don't want anybody else to make that mistake i should have just told my cousin right away and just let it be whatever happened happened regardless what how the family look at it if she chose to tell them i should have told the truth if anything that is one of my biggest regrets in life is not telling the truth sooner even though even though it shouldn't matter when you decide to tell your truth because sometimes when something happens to you you're not always you're not always ready to talk about it in, like instantly sometimes it takes processing it you have to process it you cuz sometimes you're in disbelief you can't believe that this really happened to you and i know for some people they need time some people need a couple of days some people need weeks some people need months some people need years because everybody's healing journey is different everybody's processing time is different so i am not saying i'm not saying you guys should rush to tell your truth but i am saying just tell it because it will set you free and it will help you heal quicker if you ever heal because i don't think you ever really heal from those kind of things you simply learn to forgive and move on for your own peace of mind but it never really goes away that stays with you which is why i wouldn't wish those kind of experiences on on anyone on earth not even my worst enemy i don't think i have an enemy but <laughs> you guys know what i'm saying um so never ever 
stay quiet in those situations because because it will hurt you more than it will ever hurt anybody else by telling the truth. So, um, yeah, that happened and I no longer no longer um have the relationship that I have with my cousin. Yeah, she's still married to her husband. Um you know, and I wish her the best. I wish her good. I wish her well, you know, in her relationship and I hopefully the man hopefully her husband has changed and that was just a phase or hopefully he was possessed by something because anything else would be better than knowing that he is actually a monster so hopefully it was just a stage or a phase um but yeah guys i strongly think that we should normalize teaching children that strangers are not the only ones to be feared that they should be on the lookout for any weirdness any bad vibe or red flags from relatives as well or people that they are close to because i feel like i feel like the most unexpected things are usually the best thing that happened to us or the worst thing that happened to us so in a way if we raise our children to expect that they could somewhat be hurt by those close to them their loved ones it will be less painful when it does happen and they'll be more aware to the point that they could prevent those kind of things from happening simply because they have already they already have the mindset of anyone could hurt me no one is to be trusted fully now it's not to look at life from a negative point of view this is just a way of building awareness because people are different nowadays people don't have moral compass and people don't respect boundaries family doesn't mean what it used to mean and people are just entirely different i just feel like these days a lot of things goes unnoticed Everybody want to have their own definition of things. They want to have their own definition of wrong. Wrong is not wrong anymore. Wrong is wrong to who it is to and to some people. Well, it what's wrong to you might not be wrong to somebody else. And what's right to you might not be right with somebody, to somebody else because everybody have a different, everybody have different morals and belief and people have different standards and different definition of what it is to live a um generous life what it is to live a righteous life so um i think it is our job to prepare our loved ones for what's out there as well as what's inside it could be the closest people to you a lot of things could happen and um and also another thing i want to refer to is trust trust is a big thing and once that's broken i don't think it can really be repaired for example prior to leaving with my cousin she and i will live with my auntie in providence Rhode island and i remember one day my aunt found some condoms in the room that my cousin sh- and i shared and my aunt automatically assumed that the condoms were mine so she came yelling at me screaming you only 15 and you're having sex what is the meaning of this you know she was just wilding out on me she was just going crazy and just treating me like i was this criminal and i kept telling her that the condoms weren't mine but she was she was positive like she stayed firm that they were mine and she insisted that they were mine and when when i when i couldn't take it anymore i told her something that i'm pretty sure hurt her very much and i wouldn't say that i regret saying that to her till this day i don't think i regret it yeah i i i do feel bad that she was hurt but it was the truth so but but the way that i said it might have hurt her I don't I don't want to say I regret it, but I just wish that it didn't have 
come to that. So when she kept insisting that the condoms were mine, I told her, just because you were having sex at a young age and had a child doesn't mean everybody else want to take that same route. Because she had her first child at 14, I believe. Um, I could be wrong, could be 15, but either way, she had her first child very young. So to me, it was very... Um, hypocritical that she was coming at me in that manner that she was coming at me as opposed to her coming to me telling me hey um i found some condoms in your room um i don't know if it's yours or if it's your cousin's but i just wanted to have a talk with you and let you know that um you know i hope you being safe i'm glad you being safe but i just i would wish that you not having sex right now you're too young you know, I had a kid early and I just know that's not something I would want for you as well because it was hard being a, a teen mom, da, da da You know, I would have respect that more if she'd come to me in that manner. But she came to me in a manner that I was just this criminal, this sinner, and she was just to be held at such a higher standard than me. It's kind of like you cannot be a sinner and you casting rocks, you throwing rocks at other centers, you know. I just didn't appreciate being the way she did it. And also she called my entire family. She called my dad. She called my other aunties and uncles. Even faraway cousins saying, she's having sex. Crystal is having sex at 15. Can you believe this? So it's kind of like she was making me look so bad to everybody else. And one thing about me is that I hate, I hate being accused of something that I didn't do. Now, if I was having sex, I probably would have let her be, even though the condoms were not mine. I probably would have just taken the fall. But the fact that I wasn't even having sex at the time, and she just kept insisting, and not, not only that, she was telling everybody else, like, I don't want my uncle hearing that I'm having sex, even like even though I'm not, but I don't want that. That's not something I want everybody in my business, even if I was having sex. So that's another thing. I wish a lot of people in my culture would, would do. And apparently, I've met a few people, and apparently it's very common in the Caribbean culture for them to call the entire family to tell the kids business. That's something that I don't wish to pass down to my children because I feel like when you do that, it's a breach of trust. Because you should be, if you're the adult in a child's life, you should be their safety net. You should be their safe place if anything were to happen to them you should be the first person that come to mind that they would want to run to and tell you what happened and expect you to give them advice to direct them or to comfort them so when my aunt did that i automatically felt like i couldn't trust her and obviously after i told her after my remarks about her having a young kid she was obviously hurt by that which I don't know why she was so hurt, you know, she was young, yeah, but it's also the truth, and had she not come at me the way that she did, I wouldn't have felt the need to throw that back in her face, but you're not God, so she had no business judging me, especially knowing that her past is not perfect, nobody's perfect, and that's why I felt the need to say that, and what I wanted was for her to be quiet and stop saying that those condoms were mine and stop making such a big fuss about it. And after I said that to her, she sure did be quiet. Yes, I had to leave her house. She called my dad and said, yeah, she can stay with me no more. She's rude. Because apparently once you tell the truth and in my household to my family, you automatically cast out as the rude one. They do not like to hear about themselves. They do not like to hear the truth. They don't like once you tell the truth or remind them that they're not so perfect. They cast you out like you're the wood one, like you are the sheep of the of you the sheep of the family, and they literally just cut you out. And that's fine by me because from the things that I've experienced in life, nothing has nothing has made nothing has made me feel better than knowing that I told my truth and that I am peaceful at night and my conscience is clear. So I'm okay with being cast out as a rude person because the thing about them, about my dad's side of the family, they never see where they go wrong. They always 
feel like they're right. And that's wrong because just because you're an adult doesn't mean you're always right. And and me, I was the type of kid, like, I used to be shy and just look down and let everything slide. But the moment I was, like, 15, 16, and um, I became a little more Americanized, I would say, and, you know, I started speaking my mind. From that point on, they all thought I was rude because I st- I learned to stand up for myself and stuff like that. So they were like, no, she's rude and I don't want to deal with her. And that was fine because me me speaking for myself, standing up for myself has served me more than it would if I had just stick to their ways by just sweeping everything under the rug, never stand up for myself and allow people to just say anything about me and never clear my name. I wouldn't have benefited from that like at all. So that's fine by me and back to my conversation when when um when my cousin didn't believe me that that showed me something about her that um I don't know it just felt like wow um I just never thought she would be okay with that kind of stuff you know what I mean and she knows me and I think that's that's another thing that was hurtful for her to know me so much, and yet she thought that I would lie about such a thing, for a guy that she's met a year ago and married a year, um and married six months later, it was just insane to me that she um thought I was lying. But anyways, I just feel like sometimes things have to happen. I now I don't know what was the purpose of me going through that, but as someone who believes in God. I just feel like God had there, there was a reason God had a path for me. Maybe it was maybe the reason was for me to be here telling you guys this story today and just sharing my point of view on the whole thing. Maybe that was my purpose. Maybe that was what that's why I went through it. I don't know what it was, but um I'm just glad that I was uh, I was able to overcome that situation and just grow from it and learn how to be more careful and just you know not trust people to like I trust people until proving like I trust people until I'm given a reason not to that's usually my thing but um after that incident I learned to just move carefully around people and just be aware and when she went and honestly i did say a few things back to my cousin i don't want to leave out the part where i i did say some things back to her after she didn't believe me when she said that if it happened i liked it i to- i told her straight up i can understand why you would say that to me because when your father who is my uncle when when he touched my sister everybody in their family turned the turned a blind eye no one stood up for my sister my half sister so um the story is that um my uncle which is my dad's brother um slept with my sister not touch but slept with her because my sister asked him for help financially my sister lives in haiti and my sister asked my uncle for help and my uncle um traded wanted sex in return for the help um and when when the truth came out everybody in the family turned a blind eye all of my aunties were like well what why was she asking her uncle for help and not her dad like you know like things like that and then when my cousin said that to me i said okay i could understand why you would say that because your dad did it to my sister and got away with it so now you no longer see that you no longer see those kind of things out of as a bad thing because you're so okay with it. Now, and you saw how the family handled it. So I couldn't understand that. She was like, what does my dad have to do with this? I'm like, no, I'm just stating the obvious. I'm just making the connection here. Like, I could I could understand why you think this is okay and why you would think that if it did happen, I liked it. I see what, where this is going. And I do know that um, that was hurtful to her, but it's the truth. I just feel like, if the whole family is normalizing it and making it seem like, oh, well, it's whatever, treating it like it's not a big deal, I could understand why she didn't think it was a big deal to me. Um, So, uh, again, I just feel like 
as family as older people they have to lead by example which is why i said some of these things i will not be passing down to my children my children i would not be sweeping anything under the rug you do anything to my child and my child comes tell me i will if you, if i have to take you to court i will if you have to go to jail you will i don't care who you are i don't care if you if you the father the uncle the cousin the brother the sister i will want justice because it's just not right no one should have to go through those kind of traumatic experiences like i said i wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy so i am very very serious when it comes to those kind of things because i have been sexually assaulted so many times um some when i was very young and you know in either each time it takes a piece of my innocence it takes a piece of my happiness with with them each time those things happen and every time i remember them it takes away from my happiness it's just that um like i get it i went through it and i survive it but i do wish that i didn't have to i do wish that i didn't you know i just think that sometimes people overlook at things simply because you survive it they look at you like oh you're strong so you know it's okay it happened to you because you're the right person for it you know you're fit for it you you survive it you know it's good that it happened to you but no it shouldn't have happened you shouldn't have to deal with it no one should have to deal with anything that they didn't ask for no one should be getting sexual advancement that they didn't ask for no one should be violated no one should be assaulted all of these things and as somebody who now have a daughter i just know that i will burn a country for my daughter i'm sorry if anyone ever do that to her i just god forbid i just know that i would take matters into my own hands yes i will go to the law but if the law is not doing anything i will take matters into my own hands because i do know how it feels and it is not a good feeling like at all taking away somebody's innocence taking away a child's innocence or just leaving someone with such scars is just such a it's just such an ugly thing that i really pray that nobody experienced that but anyways guys um thank you guys for listening i just had it in my heart to share this part of my story with you guys um i don't want to keep going into much more because i feel like i am on the verge of tearing up and i started this on a positive note so i want to end it on a positive note and just hope that you guys stand up for yourself always speak your truth and don't worry about the consequences because if you believe in god or whatever it is just know that god has your back the universe has your back whatever you believe in has your back and they will it will always take care of you no matter what so tell your truth you may have to take a step back you may have to start over remove yourself from the situation and start over but don't ever let the thought of starting over or the thought of losing people in the process stop you from telling your truth because anybody you lose by telling your truth wasn't worth to wasn't worth being in your life to begin with so tell your truth and let the people who are not made to be in your life watch them fade away watch god clean up your life so tell your truth and leave the rest in god's hand because i promise you one thing about god one thing about god he will always protect you your angels will always be looking over your shoulder so tell your truth and you know what they say the truth will set you free and i will see you guys on the next episode thank you guys so much for giving me um some time of your day you know i really appreciate it 
Thank you guys for listening to the CWC. Make sure you guys follow us on Instagram, Conversations with Crystal Pod. Use our hashtag and don't forget to like, comment, and share with your family and friends. And be sure to stay connected with us by sending us DM of what you would like to hear us discuss on the upcoming episodes. And we love you guys.